All right, welcome to your daily dose of Roblox. Um, if I make a part right now, right? So I'm, I'm empty, I'm, you know, empty workspace, empty game, everything like that. And in this part, I make a proximity prompt, right? So I, I put it on here and it has these like properties or whatever. I'm just gonna make this longer just so you can see the names. What do we got? Clickable prompt, enabled, whatever, right? It doesn't matter. How this works is that now when I actually go ahead, you know, and, and play the game, right? We have our part. Now, when I walk close to it, as you can see, we have a prompt. So I can either click E to interact, or I can actually like click on it, right? And I, I believe if you were um, on like mobile, then you, you're also able to like tap on this, right? So it's either a key or a tap, right? Fairly simple. Now, what can you actually do with this proximity prompt, right? Um, let's see, clickable prompt, right? So I believe this lets you like actually click it like I just did, right? So if that was, if that was set to false, then where's the, okay then yeah okay so yes you're, you're not allowed to click it you're only allowed to actually hit the key right so i'm not sure if this will affect mobile users because because like because like they're tapping right they're not like um hitting a key or whatever so i, I feel like setting this to false might you know ruin the, the the proximity prompt for like mobile users but you know what that's good because i hate mobile users bro why you play roblox on mobile bro you got like you got browsers on there and everything you know Enabled, very simple. This prompt will just not show up. That's it. It's just it's, it's gone, right? Um, exclusivity is basically. Actually, I'm, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I'll be honest. Describes which prompts will be shown when multiple may be visible. Okay, okay. So I, I feel like if a part has multiple proximity prompts, then it shows you. So always show. I think it's like you always show it, even with other prompts. One globally or one per button. I feel like one per button is like if if there's multiple proximity prompts with the same button, then they kind of get like combined into one. Kinda, that's why I think okay. I I'm not sure about this exclusivity aspect. Right? I know it's a tutorial, but I'm not. I'm, I don't really think that matters. Like you shouldn't have too many proximity prompts on one thing anyway. Um, gamepad key code. So yeah, that seems to be like you know for like you know people people who are like on console. So this lets you select the key code for that. Hold duration. If this is zero then you know just the moment you tap it's gonna activate but then if it's like 10 then you have to like hold it for you know 10 seconds and then it's gonna fire this is you know the key so you can you you, you know you, you can pick out from here and i will later show you how to actually change all of these inside a script right uh, max activation distance i think just um if you go if your character goes like like beyond this distance then the proximity prompt just stops showing up so if i said this like a thousand for example and then, and then I play because you saw how before, like, like I had to walk up to it to actually see it. Right now it's like, because I said the distance to be so high, I can still interact with it. Right. Like that. There we go. Um, yeah, but I'll set it back to 10 name, um, object name. So if I set this to like part, right, for example, and then I play the game, what's going to happen now is as you can see, it says part. So so it adds this like text on top uh, above above this like interact text, right? Um, so maybe I'm not too sure what we can do with this part. Maybe we can make this like a bomb, right? Bomb like so, and then we could just say bomb. Um, requires line of sight. So this is so if this is true, then it only lets you use the proximity prompt if it, like if like you can actually like see the part that it's attached to. So like if, if the part is behind the wall, it's not going to let you use it, right? However, this is at default, then if the part's behind the wall, it's still going to like let you use it. Um, style is no default. Okay, yeah. So so if it's default, it's going to give you like the default, you know, like user interface that we just saw. But if it's custom, then just, you're going to have to make your own user interface for it, right? So like, yeah, again, if you want to make your own, your own user interface, go ahead. UI offset, fairly simple just offsets the thing because before it was like in the middle, but then this is going to let you like change it on the X and change it on the Y. Right. Um, and yeah, I believe that is I'll, I'll change the whole duration to five. Right. Um, and my question is, weren't you, Oh yeah. And one more thing, the action text, right? So you know how, like it said, interact, well, you can change that. So if, if we're making a bomb, we can just say like explode. Right. And then if I play the game right now, guess what it's going to say? It's going to say explode. There we go. And as you can see, because I headed to five seconds,
It's gonna go, go, boom. Obviously not boom yet, because we haven't scripted anything, right? Um, so inside of the proximity prompt, I'll make a script, and then I'll say, okay, local prompt, right? Prompt is equal to script.parent. So script.parent, that's gonna be our prompt. Now the prompt has, um, like, you know, events and functions, right? So prompt, like, let's see, let's see what functions it has, right? I'm actually not too sure myself. Input, hold, begin, right? So this will fire, um, indicating that the user began pressing the prompt GUI button, right? So I, like I said, if you're like, if you're using, you know, like just the default proximity prompt, you don't have to worry about this because, you know, Roblox automatically sends this. But if, if you, if you're making your own GUI and then you're like, oh, when the player presses a button on our GUI, then we need to, we need to tell the prompt that it should fire, right? So then you could say like, oh yeah, you know, input, um, you know, hold begin or like input hold end, right? Um, so that's pretty helpful. And let me see, is there anything else? Input hold begin, input hold end. I'll get full name that that's every, every, everything has that. Yeah. Okay. So, so it seems like the only unique functions that this prompt has is input hold end and input hold begin, right? Um, which actually I'm curious now if I, if I, run this function is this going to automatically start holding interesting okay so i guess because it's custom it doesn't do that okay okay i i i see i see that makes sense now for the events right prompt dot what do we got right we have well okay yeah well, you can change the property so you can change like the style um and this is where you can change the keyboard as well so you could say like you know enum keyboard or key code and, and that's where you could actually change the um like you know like what what you want the key to be right but as for events like i said you know to fire we have prompt button hold began and prompt button hold ended so like when the player actually begins um holding down you know the key button connected to a prompt with a non-zero hold duration so if the hold duration is zero um then i believe it's going to be like triggers. Yeah, triggered. There we go. So if the whole duration is, I believe. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. I see. There we go. Okay. So trigger just means like the prompt is done, right? So, so let, let's say if the whole duration is zero, if like the moment you click it and it, it's just done, right? Then this is going to fire. If the whole duration is like five, then if you hold it for five seconds successfully and it does like the, the circle around and whatever, and, and you know, you, you keep holding on then trigger is going to fire as well. So trigger is just whenever you actually activate the prompt, whether it's, you know, zero hold duration or five hold duration. And then you can connect that to a function, which will give you the player who triggered it. So we just print out the player, right? So whenever it's triggered, we're going to say, okay, you know, connect it to a function, which will print out the player. So if I start holding it right now, and... There we go. So at the moment I'm done, right? But as you can see, if I stop like like midway, it's not gonna do anything, right? Just like that. Um, so that is triggered. And then we have, like I said, oh, what, what is going on? <laughs> Roblox is wacky with this, man. We have input, um, oh wait, no, 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 no. So we, yeah, we have triggered, destroying, attribute change. So uh, like this, this destroying and attribute change are like everything has that basically. Um, Prompt shown. So that's actually very interesting as well. So when, you know, like when the um, player actually enters the, like, you know, the max activation distance and, and actually sees the prompt for the first time, this is going to trigger, right? So I can connect it. Um, I don't think this actually gives you the function, which, which is interesting. Let me see. Print hello. Yeah, so prompt shown. And then let's see if I, okay, actually, actually, I think this might be a, like a local script thing now that I think about it, because like on the server, you're not going to just, just give me a second. Let me, let me, let me, let me try something out. Right. Because, because like server is for everyone. Right. But it's like, like this is for showing a prompt and you know, like, like if one person sees a prompt, that doesn't mean that the others will as well. Right. So let me, let me just do local prompt is equal to game or no, wait, workspace, wait for child bomb, wait for child proximity prompt. Okay. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, so, so shown is only for the clients. 
That make, that makes more sense. Okay. So yeah, so yeah. Uh, prompt shown only works on local scripts, just like that. Um, and yeah, like I said, then we have yeah, prompt shown, attribute changed, blah blah blah. Uh, prompt hidden again. I assume for the client as well. Um, trigger ended. So this is where you know the the, the button's actually like released. Um, after I assume the the prompt has actually successfully ran, although I'm not sure. Let me see. Yeah, then we get the player who triggered, prints player. So let, let, let's actually see how, how this goes, right? Because it's, it's always great to just, you know, see how stuff works. Um, if I let go right now, nothing prints out. But then if it, you know, goes through, and then I let go, that makes sense. Okay, so, okay, okay, that makes more sense. So trigger ended seems to be, like, activate when you let go of the key after you trigger it, right? So if you let go early, it's not going to do anything. That's pretty cool. Um, and then let's see, prompt dot... What else do we got? Yeah, trigger ended. Um, yeah, prompt hidden. Yeah, then we have prompt button hold began and prompt button hold ended. So th this, I assume, only fires when your hold duration is above zero, right? So for me, it's five. So when you begin holding, this is going to fire and it's going to give you, again, the player who, you know, is 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 firing. And then there's another one, which is prompt button um, ended, right? So when you stop holding it, that's when it's actually not so like I could print like player two dots um, began, right? And then I could print this again and I could just say ended. So, so let's see how this works. So now if I go ahead and I start. Unable to. Oh, I see. Okay. My bad, boys. Player dot name. There we go. I should probably I should probably get the name. Um, let's see. There we go. Okay, yeah. So the moment I start holding, it says the original lamp again. And then when it stops, ended. Okay, that makes sense. But then if I end prematurely, okay, that makes sense. Okay, okay. That's pretty cool. So it fires once you begin and it fires ended once you either, you know, like, like complete it or once you just let go, even if it's not completed. That's pretty cool, right? That's pretty cool. So like I said, you know, let's do this to make a bomb. So I'll just say prompt uh, dot triggered connect function player who triggered that doesn't matter though. Um, we'll make just we'll just make a local explosion and we'll just say local explosion equals instance dot new explosion right. Then we'll set the explosion's parent equal to workspace and then we'll just say explosion dot position is equal to prompt dot parent so prompt dot parent being this bomb dot position. So we're going to making a new position. I mean, we're making a new explosion and we're saying, okay, this explosion goes inside the workspace so we can actually see it. And then its position is going to be the parts position. So the parts going to like explode, right? And then we're going to actually probably destroy the part. So prompt dot parent destroy. So we're going to make, create an explosion at the parts position, and then we're going to destroy the part. So let's see what happens. Well, I know, I know what's going to happen. We're just going to, we're going to explode, you know? Oh, oh, if I let go, okay. Okay, and now let's see. What's up? What's up? There we go. Wonderful. And it's gone. Okay, so no more <laughs> no more proximity prompt. Um, I mean, yeah, that's basically it. You know, check the comments. I have a newsletter. Check the description of the video for Discord server. It's very, very cool, very funny. I'm going to delete this, and we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.